Inflation is an increase in the general price level, like the average of all the prices in the economy. At what rate does that average rise? Well, there are a lot of prices in the economy. There are a lot of goods and services and, and resources being traded. So how is that measured? How do we calculate for a modern, large, complex economy, what is the rate at which prices are rising on average? The process starts with a survey to determine the commodities that are bought by the typical consumer. These commodities and the quantities in which they are consumed in a typical month is called the consumer basket. I like to think of this as an actual physical basket that has all of these commodities in there, but bear in mind that it includes services, it includes transportation, it includes haircuts. So find some way to think of those in the basket as well, in the quantities in which they are consumed. So if haircuts happen a lot to the typical consumer, then we have four or five haircuts in there. Countries do surveys to identify what is in the typical consumer basket for that particular country. We see that the basket is therefore going to change from time to time. A recent survey in Namibia and reweighting of their basket resulted in the food and non-alcoholic beverages category with a weighting of just under 30% in the previous basket as a result of the previous survey has been reduced now to just over 16%. Because consumer habits change over time, then what ends up being in the basket and the weights they have in the basket is going to change over time. So to see how statistical agencies actually do their calculation, we're going to set up a, a simple economy with only two consumer goods, food and transportation. And after the survey of our consumers in this simplified economy, we determine that in a typical month, four food items are purchased and one fee for transportation, one transportation ticket. In 2019, food cost $100 and the price of transportation was $600. So we can calculate that the cost of consuming this basket, the cost of purchasing this basket would have been $1,000. But by 2020, prices changed. Food went up by 10% to $110 and transportation went up to $650. So the cost of purchasing that same basket in 2020 went up to $1,090. And let's say we also have information for 2021 and the cost of the basket in 2021 was 1,210. Well, the cost of the basket rose by 9% between 2019 and 2020 and by 11% between 2020 and 2021. So we have a measure of inflation the popular measure of inflation is nothing more than the rising cost of consuming, the rising cost of purchasing the typical consumer basket as reflected, as captured by the consumption survey done by the country's statistical agency. Even though we now have an estimate of inflation in this country, 
we are going to complicate the calculation in order to explain what a consumer price index is. We're going to convert our calculation to index numbers. First, we select a base year. We choose 2019. Step one after that is to divide the cost of the basket in every year by the cost of the basket in the base year. So in this case, all the costs are divided by 1000. The next step is to multiply all of those results by 100 to give our index a base of 100. And now we have converted the cost of the basket to an index number called the consumer price index. The relative change between the values for the different years is going to remain the same. The index now rises by 9% up to 2020 and by 11% up to 2021. So the measure of inflation does not change, but statistical agencies publish the consumer price index from which they calculate the measure of inflation. You will note, of course, that based on this methodology, the consumer price index for the base year is always going to be 100. So this is how inflation, or at least the most popular measure of inflation, is measured. Using the CPI does have limitations as a measure of inflation, as a measure of how fast prices are rising. For one thing, the basket is typical, but it is not identical to each and every consumer. So most residents might be consuming a basket with different commodities and different weighting. So if an item that you consume a lot of, but the general population consumes little of, if that item goes up in price by a lot, then your cost of living is going to be rising more than what is reflected in the calculation of inflation based on the consumer price index. A second and more subtle problem is that the consumer price index purports to represent a rise in the cost of living. That is why it is based on a survey on what people generally purchase as part of their living. But we know that people respond to changes in relative price. That when the price of apples goes up relative to other food items, people don't continue to consume the same amount of apples. They switch their consumption to cheaper alternatives, to alternatives that have not risen in price by quite as much. And so because consumers consistently switch their expenditure to relatively cheaper goods and services, then the actual cost of your living is not rising as fast as the cost of purchasing the basket in which the items are fixed in number. So because consumption adjusts the relative price changes, everyone's actual cost of living is rising by slightly less than the rise in the cost of the consumer basket. The third limitation of using the consumer price index as a measure of increases in the cost of living is the fact that items change in quality over time. And the survey looks only at the price of what is called or identified or named as that item. So the cost of a 
mobile device, a cell phone, for example, the change in the cost of that item will be reflected in the consumer basket from year to year. But the quality of the device to which that price is attached might be improving from year to year. And the consumer price index does not have any way of capturing improvements in quality. So even though the consumer price index is a pretty good estimate of changes in the cost of living, it has its limitations because of these considerations. But if we are interested in changes in the price level, then the consumer price index is not the only game in this town. Inflation can also be estimated using something called the GDP deflator. Here's how that works. GDP at current prices calculates the value of total production in an economy using the prices that apply in each contemporaneous year. So 2019 is evaluated at the prices that obtained in 2019. 2020's volumes are evaluated at the prices that obtained in 2020. Another series is calculated called GDP at constant prices, where they pick one particular year's prices and use those prices to sum up what is the total volume of production in every year. So if GDP at current prices uses contemporaneous prices and GDP at constant prices uses the same set of prices and both calculations, both series use the same volumes of output, then the relative change between those two, those two sets of values lies only in the changes in prices. So we can extract those price changes by dividing GDP at current prices by GDP at constant prices and multiplying by 100 so that our resulting index numbers have a base of 100. This computation gives you another estimate of how prices are changing. This is called the GDP deflator. It's a price index. It's an estimate of how prices, how the prices of the goods and services produced in the economy have increased. The reason that we have two different ways of measuring changes in the general price level is that they are measuring different things. They are measuring different baskets. The consumer price index is measuring, since it's based on a survey, it's measuring goods and services that are bought by consumers. Whether those items are produced domestically or imported, that basket is made up of goods and services bought by consumers. The GDP deflator is a different basket. GDP is domestic production. So the basket of prices that is being measured by the GDP deflator would have all the goods and services produced in the country and no imports and would include domestic production that a typical consumer would not buy, such as logistic services, 
or business consultancy. Business consultancy and logistic services would be in the GDP deflator. It would not be in the CPI. And actually, there are actually many indices. There's also something called the producer price index, which is the producer's version of the consumer price index. The goods and services that are bought by the typical business. So the basket there would be business consumption items, even if they are imported. So these are some of the ways that we measure price increases in an economy. What good are price indices? They have uses other than calculating, other than estimating how much inflation there is in, a, in an economy. Importantly, they can be used to deflate nominal values to get real ones. Suppose you earn $160,000 a month, one year, and the following year, you get a modest salary increase and another increase the year after that. Those would be nominal values. That monthly salary would represent nominal values. That doesn't tell you if the quantity of goods and services that you can consume year to year is going up or not. In other words, that is not telling you whether your real salary, meaning in this context, your purchasing power has gone up or gone down because prices are rising at the same time. If prices are rising more slowly than the increases in your nominal salary, then you're better off. You can buy more. But if prices are rising faster, you're actually getting worse off because your purchasing power will be less. We can work out what is happening to our real pay, our purchasing power, by using a price index. You can divide each nominal salary by the corresponding price index for that year, and the result of that calculation represents your real salary. That tells you that taking account of the nominal salary increase and rising prices, your purchasing power went down in 2020 and then went up slightly in 2021, but not up by so much that you got back to the level that you were at two years before. Your takeaway is that inflation, the increase in the general price level, is measured by the changing cost of a particular basket of commodities.